Hello and welcome to Status Update. I'm your host, Paul Hockmesser. And I'm Amanda Gallegos. This year, our beloved Queen City Bells celebrate their 50th anniversary. Amanda Gallegos gives us some insight into what this milestone represents. This year marks the 50th anniversary for the Queen City Bells. Coach Kayla Lopez and Captain Jacqueline Ortiz will be giving us more information about this program and traditions for this upcoming year. Typically, every year we get anywhere from 15 to 20 new bells. It really varies um, depending on tryouts. This year, we have around 16 new bells. Um, well, this year, a bell tradition that has changed, we actually gained a new member to our family. We now have a bear named Bell, and Bell basically goes with every new bell of the week. So they get to stay at the Bell of the Week house as basically an award for being Bell of the Week. Well, this year, the Queen City Bells are celebrating the 50th anniversary of the program. And we're going to take the 50th group to represent the state in Washington, D.C. for the Memorial Day Parade. Uh, we did have that invitation uh, the year that uh, COVID hit. So we got the invitation extended. And I think that's pretty cool and exciting. Well, there is some tradition. I'll, I'll, I'll start with that first. Uh, starting off with the classic uniform. If you notice, the Bells have two uniforms. The one that we wear at the home game is the classic uniform. So that's the uniform the Bells uh, wore when they first originated in 1972. And um, But as far as uh, evolving, um, well, we don't wear any more Keds because I know the Bells used to wear a lot of Keds. The Ked shoes, uh, they used to wear wigs back then, so we don't wear wigs. And um, they used to wear blue eyeshadow. And so we evolved by taking away that blue eyeshadow and um, we went from they used to kick in hard, uh, hard bottom boots with heels, and now they're they're soft sole boots. And uh, there's there's a lot of changes that evolved. Even the style of dance, um, bells used to be strictly kick, and so now we do different styles of dance such as jazz, hip hop, contemporary, modern, and of course we keep our kick routines. Uh, they originated when the two schools consolidated, Doria High School and San Felipe Mustang High School. They consolidated, and um, it was the Senoritas and the Del Rio Dolls. And so when the district, the schools consolidated, that's when the Queen City Bells came to be in 1972. As the year progresses, we celebrate this honor for SFDR CISD institution. We encourage you to come out to support the Queen City Bells and their events in our community. Visit the Queen City Bells social media pages, our booster page, and our district calendar for these dates. This has been Amanda Gallegos. Thank you. Thank you, Amanda. Delaware High School Athletics Department offers many sport activities for its students, and Mondays is golf. Nathaniel Rubio swing by one of their practices to tell what really being a golfer is all about. If you form a part of the athletic community, you may know that golf is often derived as an easy sport. This cannot be further from the truth. Golf requires focus and extreme dedication to help master its high skill gap. We spoke with Coach Cardenas and some members of the golf team to help us understand what it takes to be a part of this sport. Well, we start in July. We started to uh, come practice here in July and August to get ready for the fall season. Most of these kids, they come on their own. They practice on Saturdays and Sundays. And then, of course, we open in August, so all these kids are ready, prepared to come during the week. And then the most of the practice is on their own on Saturdays is to come out here and practice four hours to play nine holes. But uh, we encourage them to practice daily. It's a 16, uh, six days a week practice so they can get to where they want to be. I started coaching golf back in 1994. It's been 30 years. I coached five years as a baseball assistant and two years as cross country and track. And then I took the golf job. So I've been here 30 years. A lot of district championships, a lot of regionals, and a lot of uh, three teams, to, two teams, excuse me, two teams to state and four individuals that went to state by themselves. Well, we try to improve on a monthly basis and then on a yearly basis, try to improve your score as you 
progress from your freshman year to your sophomore year to your junior year to your senior year. So by the time you're a senior, hopefully you'll be shooting in the 70s. So every year there's a goal that they want to accomplish to get better throughout the year. Our tournaments, we play three in the fall, one in September, one in October, and one in December. The same thing with the girls, three tournaments in the fall, and then we play five tournaments in the spring, five for the boys and five for the girls. That includes JV, five for the JV, and five for the JV girls. I started playing golf when I was a freshman. I was 14. But in eighth grade, in eighth grade, because I started like coming out here by myself and just looking at people hit. But I like the sport a lot. It, I would say it's more challenging than other sports. Keeping up with it, it's a lot of practice. You have to come on weekends. It's mostly like um, you have to come Monday through Sunday, so seven days out of the week. You, it's an all-around season sport, so we come when it's cold, we come when it's hot, we come when it's raining, and we, we come when it's very humid. I started playing golf, I want to say when I was about six or seven, I picked up a club with my dad, but I stopped playing because I really didn't like it, and about last year, that's when I started really getting into it. Right, just being out here on the course and stuff, hanging out with friends, being around coach and stuff, stuff like that. It just takes so much patience, time, I mean, it's really hard to shoot even out here. I think by far it's the hardest sport out here. My farthest drive ever would probably be like about 260 and it carried with the roll and everything about 280. Thank you to Coach Carter and us and the golf team for help giving us an opportunity to gain some insight into their sport. Good luck to them in their upcoming tournament. Back to you, Paul. Thank you, Nathan. This year, Delaware High School's orchestra is undergoing a transition period. Along with a new instructor, the program is also experiencing an influx of new members in addition to revamping their musical selections. We have Dallas Smith Tamayo with more. From mariachi to band to choir, Delrio High School's wonderful assortment music classes teach the youth the wonderful world of melodies and just what it takes to perform in front of dozens of people. Hi, I'm Dallas Smith Tamayo, and today I will be talking to some of the orchestra students to see just what orchestra is all about and what the new year has to offer them. My name is Jordan Becker. I am a senior, and I've been playing violin since I was five years old. Hello, my name is Evelyn Gonzalez. I'm a freshman, and I've been playing since the fourth grade. Hi, my name is Kaylee Morales. I am a sophomore, and I've been playing the violin since fourth grade. One of the best parts of being in orchestra is the relationships I've developed. Some of my closest friends are in orchestra, but I also like the challenge of getting new music um, semi-frequently, even with the time limit that we have to learn it, and the performance experiences that we're exposed to. Um, orchestra has impacted my life by showing me different ways of expression, not only through music, but through people. I've learned to communicate with people more through orchestra, and yeah. Orchestra has impacted my life in multiple ways. I find a way of expressing how I feel through music and it not only helps with my mental health but it also helps me to be strong because I realize I have a group to help lead. Um, so I've learned to be stronger in that type of aspect. I would definitely recommend other students to join orchestra um, overall, playing an instrument and being a part of this program or any sort of music program is beneficial to anybody really. And we do have a fairly small program despite this, so it would be incredible if we could get more members. Yes, I would encourage people to join orchestra because it could teach you not just communication skills but a new language. You learn to read music and you get to express yourself through music, you get to travel, that's pretty cool. You get concerts, you can do fundraisers, it's fun. Thank you to the wonderful orchestra students and thank you to Mr. Garza for allowing us to interview them. Go, remember to go support your orchestra. Thank you, Dallas. Along with the Almasod Lake, the San Felipe Creek is a landmark of our city. As it provides many benefits to our community, we must also do our part to protect it. Ula Juan Hernandez spoke with our local park superintendent on how we can do this. The San Felipe Creek has become a staple here in the small community of Del Rio, Texas. Running through many of its city's most populated areas and fed by natural springs, the creek has become known for its clear waters. What many don't know is that the creek has become polluted. We spoke with San Felipe Creek 
coalition members in order to ask what we as a community can do to help keep the creek clean. My name is Lupita La Paz. I'm the executive director of the Casa de la Cultura. My name is Laura Padilla. I work for Texas Parks and Wildlife as a park interpreter. And we're both part of the San Felipe Creek Coalition, along with National Park Service. I, I think everybody just has to do their part. But just getting a bag and, and going out there and picking up trash, I think it's up, up to everyone. If you see somebody at the creek, um, if you feel like, like if you're able to tell them, hey, pick that up, or maybe just take initiative and just pick it up yourself. There's a lot of things that cause creek pollution. Lack of education, for <laughs> sure. We, as Texas Parks and Wildlife, we have a mission statement, and our mission statement is to educate. So that is a goal. You know, we, we want uh, for the students or for the next generation to take care of the environment. That is the mission for us. Given this information, it is important to take action. Help keep the creek and the rest of our community clean. This has been Urajan Hernandez with Status Update. Thank you, Urajan. This marks the end of our new programming. I am your host, Amanda Gallegos. And I am your host, Paul Hockemesser. And this has been Status Update. Stay tuned for our next program.